time since 1990 a number one seed entered a sweet 16 game as an underdog that's Washington against Louisville watch Otis George set the screen on Bobby Jones bang down to the ground wow did somebody want to call out screen it'd be okay Nate Robinson Francisco Garcia got tangled up that's Robinson's third he goes to the bench Garcia doesn't go to the bench he just goes off Garcia with the three off a screen hits another one Garcia will drive, this time the dish to Perrin Johnson. Louisville would outscore Washington 31-12 with Nate Robinson on the bench at the end of the first half. Second half, Louisville not letting down. Up 56-45, Garcia still firing. He had 23. The first Cardinals scored 20-plus in three straight tournament games since Purvis Ellison in 88. Robinson back out in front with 9.50 left in the game. That's his first field goal. He only had eight points in the game. Taekwon Dean, an answer. Hit the three. Dean had 19 points. Scary moment now for Louisville. Watch Dean. Rolls his ankle. He would have to leave the game. Now, he would return. Afterwards, Rick Pitino expressed concern about his ability to play Saturday, but they will be playing Saturday. Rick, rank it for me. I think Providence and this team have been the two most rewarding experiences of, of my coaching life uh, because of all the, the adversity we had to go through from day one. So that's the great thing about college basketball. There's so many rewards outside of the actual win. Not a whole lot of people have believed in these guys the last couple years, and they just continued to work and work and work and do things right to where we got to this point where we're here before you. Uh, we would have liked to have gone further, obviously, but uh, there's no finger pointing here on our guys. They, they gave every ounce of effort that they had. Louisville's next opponent might want to turn away. The Cardinals have gotten better and better as the tournament has progressed after shooting 38.6% from the floor, scoring 68 points in their first round win over Louisiana Lafayette. The Cardinals shot better than 50% in each of the last two games. Texas Tech, West Virginia, Bob Knight's first Sweet 16 since 1994. Second half of a tight game. Ronald Ross, the pilfer, the push, and the points. He had 16 in the game on 8 of 22 shooting. We're all tied at 51. Tied up at 53 now. Kevin Pitts noggle. 15 of his 22 in the second half. Mountaineers up a tray. Final buck 20. Devon Giles using the window. His first point since the opening minute. Two-point game. Ensuing possession. Tyrone Sally throws it away, but no lay down Sally here. He gets back for the block on Jarius Jackson. Final minute. Key sequence. Jackson rejected by Dior Fisher. There's a scramble. There's chance number three. Another scramble. Somebody put it up, please. Opportunity after opportunity. Daryl Dora misses the layup. Chance number four of the sequence. And West Virginia moving on. 65-60. Bob Knight's run is over. They are an extremely well-taught team uh, uh, at both ends of the floor. They cover well on defense for one another uh, and, and individually pressure. On offense, they have really good movement and read. Uh, very well. I knew us as a team would come together and you know try to pull it out in the end and you know that's the way we are. We're such a t great team and you know everyone steps up every night. We're not one of those powerhouses Dukes or you know North Carolina's yet um, but we like to be under the radar and uh, you know we just caught hot at the right time. Nothing that's happened right now has sunk into me. I think uh, I'm just trying to do my job here for the University of West, for West Virginia University. I'm just trying to do my job and, and the, the Elite Eight, the Sweet 16, it, it's like this, the season just keeps going, and I love it. How about West Virginia in the Elite Eight for the second time in school history? Back in 1959, the team's leading scorer, Jerry West. Bob Knight, by the way, a freshman at Ohio State that year. And one of the captains of that 59 Mountaineer squad, Ron Retton, whose daughter Mary Lou was a pretty fair gymnast. Digger Phelps now, tie highlighter and all, breaking down the Albuquerque Regional. Great coaching battle in the Chicago Regional. Sutton v. Olson, OK State in Arizona, and Salim Stoudemire would make his presence felt before this day was done. Final 10 seconds of the first half, Hassan Chop. Adams for three, Zona by three at the break. Second half, Stoudemire. Dish to Adams. Reverse me. Hassan, 19 points, 10 rips. Cats up by seven. And it's Celine. From deep, money. The Cats shoot 50% from beyond the arc. They're still down by one. 
Arizona takes the lead on a Channing Fry jumper. He had 15. Final 30 seconds. Joey Graham, who had a combined score of 15 points the first two games, 26 on Thursday. Cowboys back up. Final 10 seconds. Who are you going to go to? Yeah. Salim Stoudemire, 19 points, and that would be the game winner if OK State could not convert. Last chance, John Lucas, iron unkind. The Cats claw forward thanks to their star shooter. I thrive in those situations, and that's what I live for. That's why I play basketball, because um, I think big-time players step up in big-time situations, and I see myself as one of those type of players. I mean, I'm happy, but I want to get to the Final Four because I haven't been there, so I know that there's business ahead of us. We take great pride in our defense, and tonight uh, they just shot lights out. Uh, I think that uh, they've got a great chance to beat Illinois. Arizona now 7-4 and four in the Sweet 16 since the field expanded to 64 teams back in 85. Only three teams, Duke, Kentucky, and North Carolina, have had more Sweet 16 success than these Wildcats. Tournament victory number 45 for Lute Olsen and number 741 overall. Cinderella of the dance, 12th seeded Wisconsin-Milwaukee facing Illinois. First half, watch this play. Ed McCants from the it's seat of his pants yes, to Joe Tucker 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 for the lay-in. Wisconsin-Milwaukee within four. Later, Darren Williams to Roger Powell. Illinois by seven at the break. Second half, Tucker again. Career-high 32 points for him. Moments later, it's Williams. Top of the key, knocks down the three. 21 points on eight of 12 shooting. Next, Illini possession, D. Brown. 15 of his 21 came courtesy of the three ball. Over a minute to go. Williams, one of his eight dimes to Luther Head, who scored a dozen. The clock has struck midnight for Wisconsin-Milwaukee. 77-63, Illinois becomes the first team since Duke's 2001 title squad to win 35 games. Austin. So Coach K looking to continue his domination. Izzo 4-1 in Sweet 16 games. And Allen Anderson, 3-4 of four from three-point range. He had 17 points. Six-point game. Daniel Ewing, no. Lee Melchione, oh yeah, he had seven. It's a four-point game. Then Michigan State getting out and running. Maurice Ager get out of his way. He had 14 points. Michigan State had 40 points in the paint. J.J. Redick. Would you believe his first field goal of the game came in the second half? He had just 13 points, 4-14 from the field. Reddick again from three, no. Sheldon Williams, the putback, but what happened there? The ball looked to go in and out, says Coach K. Well, Williams hung on the rim before the ball goes through the cylinder, and the ref calls offensive interference. 22 turnovers for Duke. Paul Davis, 20 points, 12 boards. Williams is out, fouled out. And then watch Demarcus Nelson and J.J. Redick with Duke down six. Redick with 121 threes made this season. Nelson with 15. So who gets the ball to make the three? Nelson? Yeah. Michigan State wins this thing, eliminates Duke. Paul Davis explains what made the difference for the Spartans. As a team, we just felt um, we just played a 40-minute war, and that's what it was. And to come out on top, there's no greater feeling um, than to be on that sidelines with uh, your coaches and your teammates. One thing I knew, uh, they weren't letting us win. We had to beat them. Uh, they don't beat themselves very often. And, uh, and I thought tonight, you know, it was as close to maybe us being more the, the reason we won than, than them losing the game. One of the things you have to be careful about is always letting someone else define your successes and failures. You know, and you know, this has been a very, very successful year with a great group of kids. So the one seed Duke out. Michigan State pulls off a rare feat of revenge after losing to Duke by seven in the regular season. The Spartans eliminate the Blue Devils in the Sweet 16. The only previous time Coach K had lost in the NCAA tournament to a team he beat in the regular season, 1988, when the Jayhawks went on to win the national championship as a six seed. Well, on that same floor, would the same Duke fate await Kentucky? Tubby Smith's Wildcats and Utah going at it. And Tubby's first season, Scott Padgett, 17 points, helped Kentucky defeat Michael Doliak and Rick Majerus' Utah team. Now facing Utah seven years later, Kentucky up five. For the most part, did a good job on Andrew Bogut. He missed the free throw, though. Only 4 of 11 from the line, 8 of 19 from the floor, career high in misses. Kentucky got contributions from everyone, including Ravi Moss. 
Kentucky going to their senior leader, Chuck Hayes. Hayes made the freebie. Kentucky 6-0 now all, all time in tournament play against Utah. It's the best record by any school against any opponent in tournament history. In fact, only two matchups have occurred more often at all. That's Marquette in Kentucky and UCLA against San Francisco. Chris Fowler and our game day crew on the night that was in Austin. Late game in the Syracuse Regional, North Carolina, Villanova. Roy Williams got 37 NCAA tournament wins. That's great. No titles. First half. Villanova up eight. Randy Foy from three. So Roy in the heels would trail by four at halftime. Second half, it really gets good. North Carolina's down three. Raymond Felton. He had 11 and 11 before, fouling out for the first time all season. Bad time to do it. Tied at 50, Rashad McCants. 15 of a 17 came in the second half. North Carolina up seven. Marvin Williams with three. He had 16 in the game. Villanova was down eight. Where's Mike Nardi when you need him? Well, he's hanging out at the top of the key. Villanova trailed by five. 17 and a half seconds left. Down for Randy Foy. Led the team of the season high 28, but missed the second free throw. Rebound of Will Sheridan. 11.6 seconds left. Villanova down three. Allen Ray drive. Gets it to go. Called for traveling. Wait a second. Yuck. Did he travel instead of a bucket? Foul. Possible three-point play. It's a travel, a turnover, and likely the ball game. That's what costs Villanova. Here's Roy on that Villanova speed, or lack of it. They're very good, and it's easy to see how the teams slow you down in some ways because they take a lot of time on the offensive end of the floor. And then they kept getting offensive rebounds. There were three different times where we played defense for about 30 seconds. They got a rebound. We played for about another 30 seconds. And uh, uh, you slow people down with the way you play on the offensive end. It's, I've never in my life thought it was any great stat when the other team gave up few points if they control the ball on the offensive end of the floor. And they're good. I thought we was good enough to win this game, but we didn't. So I can't complain about that. But my 28 points don't matter because we lost. And the biggest thing is winning the game. And no matter if I had two points, I'd be happy if we win the game. North Carolina moving on. This tourney beginning to look a lot like the 2002 version when top seeded Duke lost to a five seed from the Big Ten, just like this year. And the other ACC one seed advanced to the Final Four through Syracuse. The Tar Heels hope they can emulate the Terrapins' performance from three years ago. So who will the Tar Heels play in the Elite Eight? NC State or Wisconsin? Wisconsin, the Badgers were down nine at the half. They were down by as many as 10 in the first half. But after a pep talk, Badgers came out storming. Sharif Shambliss. Wisconsin was four of 10 from three-point range. It's a four-point game. Orlando Tucker, 22 points, including eight in a row for Tucker. He was nine of 17 from the field. Wisconsin opened the second half on a 24 to seven run. Later in the second, Wolfpack down six. Julius Hodge doing all he can. He had 14 points on four of 15 shooting, but Wisconsin was too much when it mattered most. Mike Wilkinson. Wisconsin moves on. Now more with Chris Fowler and the game.